Okay, and welcome to day five of the Sprint to Freedom. Very excited to have you in with us. And today, uh, I wanted to talk about two things. Number one, I wanted to talk about faith as you know, as we continue with the mindset piece of building your business. I wanted to talk about faith, and then I also wanted to talk about your assignment for today. So hopefully you've been publishing, you've been continuing to publish, being consistent with that. Uh, you know, making your videos, making your audios, uh, writing your blogs, whatever it is that you do. Um, I hope hopefully you've been continuing to to be consistent with that. And uh, also that yesterday you started your lead magnet, right? So now that we got those two housekeeping things out of the way, let's talk about faith. All right. So if you're going to be successful in business, if you're going to really make this happen, <clears throat> excuse me, there needs to be a level of faith that you have, right? And there's got to be something in you that believes that you can do what it is that you're setting out to do. Because up to now, you know, you've probably been an employee most of your life, not all your life. And to shift from being someone who works with someone else to being an employer being someone who creates the paycheck instead of waits on a paycheck, that's a faith journey. That's a faith move. And you've got to be someone who builds faith as well as building your business. So for the two to three hours that you're going to work on your business every day, uh, ideally, you know, obviously you're going to be doing you know, the actual nuts and bolts, you're going to be doing the content, you're going to be creating products, you're going to be, you know, talking to clients, talking to customers and so on. Right. So that's the building the business piece. But then you've got to build your faith when you're not building the business. You got to work on your mind because your mind is going to do everything it can to turn you back around and go head in the opposite direction. It's very easy to, you know, to say, you know, this isn't working. No one's buying my products and I'm just going to cut bait, right? I'm just going to abandon ship. So I have an example. I took the SAT and I, I barely studied for it and I got a decent score on it, right? And when you take, when you took the SAT back then, I don't know how it is now, but back then when I was in high school, uh, you could choose where those scores were sent to, right? And so one of the choices was George Mason University in Virginia, in Northern Virginia, right? And the score was sent and I um, I never applied, right? Because I didn't think I could get in because my grades weren't weren't that good, right? And I ended up going to community college. So I'm not exactly sure how I ended up at George Mason, how I ended up going. Uh, I didn't go to there for my undergrad. I, I went to uh, HBCU uh, called Norfolk State University. But um, I ended up at George Mason. I think I was looking at taking a course. And when I went to the, to the uh, registrar's office, they had the SAT score there. And the... The person working there said, you know, well, we had we got your SAT scores. Why didn't you apply? And I said, you know, I just didn't think my grades were good enough. But, you know, the woman said, you know, that the score certainly was good enough. And, you know, perhaps I could have made a plan to get there if I did, you know, maybe just did a little bit of community college and it ended up at, at Mason, right? And I don't regret my choice of going uh, where I went, you know, I, I needed to get out of the area and I needed to, you know, explore something different. So I certainly don't regret it, but it's interesting how life works sometimes. Sometimes we, and when I say life, more so our minds, sometimes we disqualify ourselves from a situation before actually trying to make the situation work. Sometimes we beat ourselves before the situation beats us because we don't want to, you know, we don't want to go through failure. We don't want to be rejected. We don't want to hear no. 
And so sometimes we remove ourselves from the situation instead of staying in the fight. And, and that's going to be something that that's going to be a constant uh, reminder throughout this whole 30 days is, you know, stay in the fight. You know, don't don't disqualify yourself. Don't throw in the towel. You know, make the enemy like knock you out. Right. Make them earn it. Don't quit. Because a lot of business owners quit because they don't see it happening as quickly as they thought it should. And that's why you have to build your faith up, because your faith is going to give you the strength to fight when you don't feel like fighting. It'll give you the strength. Faith will give you the strength to keep going when you don't feel like going anymore, right? The Bible says that faith is the evidence of things not seen and the substance of the things that we hope for, right? Now, I took that out of order, but the point is, is that faith, when you, before you have clients, before you have customers, you have to have faith. If you don't have faith, then you don't have anything, right? Once you get clients and once you get customers, you don't need faith at that point because you have the manifestation of the thing. But before the manifestation comes, you have to have faith. And you have to hold on to that faith before the clients and the customers and the viewers and the followers come, right? This is something that a lot of people don't know and certainly not something that's often talked about. But you got to hold on to that faith, right? You got to hold on to that faith. You have to have faith and then you got to hold on to it before the manifestation comes. That's the literal process of faith. And what the reason that you have to hold on to it is because that faith will draw the clients, draw the customers, draw the things that you want, the income, everything, the influence, everything. It will draw all of that in, but it, it won't happen if you don't have faith. Okay. So how does faith come? Well, the Bible's a great book on faith and, and the Bible says that faith comes by hearing right? And hearing by the Word of God. Now, the Word of God, obviously, is the Bible. So in that context, yes, you know, reading the Bible increases hearing. But basically, any word, anything that you speak over and over again, anything that you hear over and over again, builds faith. How many things have you heard over the course of your life that weren't true, but because you heard it so many times, you accepted it as true, right? I can give you some examples. Santa Claus, uh, the Easter Bunny, Bigfoot, <laughs> Tooth Fairy, right? All these different things that in reality don't exist, but we've heard it so many times, especially as young people, as kids, that we believed it, okay? You can hear something over and over again and accept it as fact, even though there's no evidence to the contrary. So if we understand that that's how it works in things that really don't move the needle, why not accept it as a way of bringing more business into your uh, company, right? Because as long as you're hoping and wishing, but you don't have faith, then the car is never going to leave the driveway right? There are a lot of people who do a lot of work, but they don't have any faith, right? The faith is basically that I'm not, I'm not going to get customers. I have customers. You got to, you got to say it before it shows up. Now, for some people, that's hard to wrap your head around. That's hard to accept, okay? Because it sounds mystical. It sounds spooky. It sounds weird, all these things, and you can put any adjective you want to put on it. But how many times have you said, I'm catching a cold? How do you catch a cold? Do, do we know that? Like, how, do we, how do you catch a cold? Okay. You don't catch a cold, but if you tell your subconscious mind enough that you're catching a cold, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start sneezing and coughing and everything else, right? And what I believe happens is that you open up your mind and you open up your body, and it's almost as if you're telling your 
your immune system to stand down so you can catch that cold, right? That might not make sense to anyone. But what I've learned over over time is that what I say repeatedly eventually comes to pass. And the older I get and the more faith I have in the things that I say, it happens even quicker. So here, here are some things that I don't want you to say anymore. If you're trying to build a business, if you're trying to get more customers, if you're trying to build your, you know, your business to the point that you want to leave your job or are able to leave your job, here are some things I never want you to say again. I never want you to say, I don't have any clients. I don't have any customers. I never want you to say that business is down. I never want you to say that nobody's spending any money. I don't want you to say uh, that, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to get, you know, my first client, but it's been a struggle. It's been hard. It's been difficult. And I don't want you to say anything like that anymore because all that's going to do is keep you right where you are. Okay. Here's what I want you to say instead. Here's what I want you to say to say instead. I want you to say that business is great. Business is booming. I want you to say that, you know, I got, you know, full roster of clients and I'm getting more and more by the day. <clears throat> and when you first say that, it's going to feel super weird because your conscious mind is saying, well, that's not true right? We don't have any clients. But here's the thing. Your words, I learned this from a, a preacher, uh, Bill Winston, your words are meant to be creative more so than communicative, right? Your words are meant to create. You have to use your words to create the thing that you want, okay? And that's how you build faith. You only talk success. Only talk business growth. Only talk tons of clients. Only talk tons of sales. Only talk that tons of views, followers, whatever, whatever it is that you want. Excuse me. Only talk that. Don't talk anything else. Don't talk failure. Don't talk struggle. Don't talk lack. Don't talk slow down. Don't talk any of that stuff. And it's hard. Nobody said it's easy. But you got to work on it by yourself, okay? While you're working, while you're working a nine-to-five job, maybe set a reminder in your calendar to five minutes talk about where your business is right now and talk about, don't talk about it from where it actually is, but talk about it where you want it to be. When I was in Philadelphia, uh, I was really struggling financially and it seemed like as soon as I got paid, all my money was gone, right? And I started saying, I wrote out like a one-minute script, and I would say it every morning, every evening. And in that script, I basically said that I have I always have more than enough money to do the things that I want and need to do. All my bills are paid on time and in full, and I have plenty of money left over. And I would say that over and over again. I would say... You know, money is no longer an issue for me anymore. And I would say that over and over again. And, you know, probably within like a month, things started to ease up. But, it, you know, all what I was saying had to go down into my subconscious mind and basically create a new reality. And in the same way, that's what you're going to have to do with this business. Now, you don't have to do any of this stuff. You can completely ignore what I'm saying and go about it however you want to go about it. And that's fine, you know, but I'm telling you from what I've learned is that you have to say it before you see it. And when you see it, you take hold of it. And once you take hold of it, then you no longer have to have faith. It's almost as if you use that faith to go and get something else, right? But in order for you to have the thing that you want, you got to have faith first, Okay. So how do you build faith? Number one, you build it through self-talk. You also build it through listening to positive business content. There are a lot of good people out there. Gary V is one of them. Russell Brunson is another one. Um, you know, Lisa Nichols is another one. 
Bob Proctor is good to listen to positive business content all the time. Just, you know, saturate your mind with that stuff, change your self-talk and start speaking the things that you want to see in your business and then take action, right? Because faith without work is dead. You can do all the affirmations, all the self-talk that you want, but until you take action and actually put stuff out, that's why we you know, we're doing these daily challenges, right? So you can put things out, put that offer out, put those co- that content out, right? Because with the doing and then, you know, the mindset stuff on top of that, you're going to start seeing results and you're going to start seeing consistent results. So today, the challenge is for you to start working on your sales funnel. Um, sales funnel is real simple. You know, we're, we've already started working on the lead magnet. That's going to be the first part of your funnel. And then the second part of the funnel will be your actual offer, right? So by the middle, like say day 15, we want you to have your offer done, your lead magnet done. And then once you have your lead magnet and your offer, then that that's two thirds of your funnel. And then... The last piece is upsell, okay? And so what we're gonna do is, you know, we'll have like a short video on how to build this quickly in Gumroad. And then if you have a website, uh, I'll show you how to do it in that too. But you're doing great. Keep going, keep moving. Start speaking the things that you want to see and then take action as we are moving through this. And you're going to start to see, like I said, those results. You're going to start to see that data come back in and you're going to start to see some good things happen. So thank you so much for listening. My name is Martin Williams and I'll talk to you soon.